Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Donovan and in today's video we're going to be talking about the brand new Polar Vantage V2. This This is my first ever Polar smartwatch, and uh, I shouldn't call it a smartwatch. I should really call this a fitness watch because it's more of a fitness watch than it is a smartwatch. Uh, but that being said, I want to go ahead and share with you just my experiences over the last two weeks. This is by no means a full review of this watch. This watch has so many features uh, that even over two weeks, I haven't really been able to even hit all of the features that this thing has to offer because, like I said, it's extensive. This watch offers a ton. The price tag comes in at $500. So it is a relatively pricey watch, um, but this was what I would call a uh, analyst or a data analyzer's dream come true when it comes to fitness, uh, because this thing offers so much uh, in terms of your fitness. So uh, if you're someone who just loves data uh, and you like to analyze your workouts, this is probably the watch for you. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, what all it has to offer. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at what all uh, I have here from Polar. So um, I've actually been using this optical heart rate sensor. This is the OH1 Plus. So this is a optical heart rate sensor. So different than a chest strap. You can see you can wear it on your forearm, uh, up here on your bicep, or even on your temple. So if you want to use it uh, for swimming, you can do it that way as well. Um, so I've actually really enjoyed this. So I've had it been, I've paired it up with my uh, V. Uh, Vantage V2. I've also used used it with my treadmill. Um, so while I'm working out, uh, doing some Zwift workouts, uh, I've used it with that as well. They did also send over the H9. This is their more budget-friendly chest strap. Um, so I haven't actually used this one because they did also send over the H10 uh, with the uh, V2. So you can see the version I have did come with the heart rate chest strap. Uh, so if you get it with the H10, which I would actually recommend because it's just $50 more, so as far as the actual watch itself, you can see I have the medium large version and honestly the small probably would have been better for me because this one's just a little bit big. Um, so I'll show you a picture of what it looks like on my wrist. Um, but um, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of walk you through some of the features that I've been using with the watch. Like I said, I haven't used everything that it has to offer, um, but here we have our optical heart rate sensor. You can see that you can remove these straps, um, but however, uh, it's important to note that these are uh, specific polar uh, Vantage V2 straps, so you can't just replace it with, uh, you know, your run-of-the-mill 20 millimeter quick release straps. Um, you are going to have to replace it with uh, straps specifically from Polar uh, for the V2. We also have a five button configuration. So similar to what you would get on like a Garmin watch, but the way you actually use it is considerably different. Um, so it did take me a little bit of getting used to in order to kind of figure out how these all work. Um, so first thing, this is like our home button or our back button. Um, and when you hit that and you're already on the home screen, it will take you into your settings, your various uh, features. So we have our start training. So this is where we're going to do our workouts. You can re um, basically <laughs> track just about any kind of workout there is out there. So 120 different types of workouts. So I'll go ahead and show you what I have here. Um, and you can set them up using the app. So it's going to uh, use the Polar Flow app. So I'm going to go over here. And uh, if I want to change the options that I have, so I can go in here to Sport Profiles. And here are the workouts I've kept on it. I believe these actually were the original uh, 11 that it came with. I think I might have thrown in a couple different ones in there. Um, but then you can add other ones. And there's, like I said, up to 120 different workouts. So, I mean, pretty much whatever it is that you do, it has here. I mean, there is no shortage of different workouts that you can track with this watch. A lot of them are probably just going to use uh, the heart rate monitor, um, but some of them obviously will also use uh, the GPS, of course. Um, so this do watch does come with uh, all the important uh, GPS options here. So if I go into settings, I'm going to go into power save settings. So 
with just the GPS, you can get up to 40 hours of battery life. Um, or if you turn on the power saving mode, you can actually get up to 100 hours. I don't recommend using it. I tried using it one day and it actually messed up my GPS tracks for that day. So I don't actually recommend that unless you really need that extra uh, time. But to me, 40 hours is plenty. Um, you should be able to get through, you know, even a hundred mile race uh, with 40 hours of GPS, which is really great. Um, we can, of course, set up various race pace uh, timers, um, interval timers, countdown timers. We can set up routes using Komoot. Um, I have not done that, as you can see. Um, and then we do also have a back to start option, kind of like a breadcrumb option to send you right back to where you started. Uh, so that's really cool. That's just in the running feature. And then of course we can go down here. So this is our down button, our up button. And of course you can use your finger as well because it is touchscreen. So 1.2 inch color display. It is an always on display. It is trans reflective, similar to what I've had on my Garmin watches that I've used in the past. We do also have specifically a track and field workout, which is cool because then you can actually tell it that you're uh, running in a particular lane on the track. And there we go. So recording started and uh, you can set it up for different features on here as well. Um, I'm obviously not going to finish this one. So this is where you're gonna pause it and then you can hold it down for three seconds to finish it. This is our lap button over here, the red button, and we're not gonna save that one because obviously that was not an actual workout. Um, but that's how we're gonna get into our workouts. We have Serene, this is like a breathing. Uh, if you are feeling a little stressed out, you can maybe do some breathing exercises. Um, so that's what that's there for. We have Strava Live segments. Um, so obviously this does sync up with Strava. If you want the live segments to work on the watch, you are going to have to actually download them or actually favorite them. So when you're in Strava, you have to actually favorite the segment um, and then it will automatically send it to the watch. So very cool. Uh, let's get out of that. Um, all right, so we have Strava Live segments. We have fueling. So this is going to let you give you a reminder. Uh, so if you're doing a long workout, maybe like a, I don't know, 30 mile run and you need a reminder, yeah, consume um, some fuel. Um, that's what this is going to remind you of. So you can set up drink reminders, car reminders, or smart reminders as well. So that's pretty cool. Not a feature I really use because I'm not really an ultra guy. Um, I don't really need reminders for fueling. I'm more of a marathon kind of guy. Uh, and personally, I've, I've kind of already got it set up in my head how I'm gonna do it. We have timers here. We have watch face views. So this is where you're gonna set up the various um, watch face features you get. Whoops, that was my back button. So I can go down here and I can turn all of these on. Uh, you don't have to obviously have them all on, but you can see that I have them basically all turned on. We'll save it. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the various tests they have available on the watch. So the first one we have is our orthostatic test. This is one I have not had a chance to try out yet. So the orthostatic test is a way for you to essentially test out your recovery, so to avoid overtraining. And what it tests is your heart rate variability. So your heart rate can vary for a number of different reasons, but if you're overtraining, that is one reason why you're going to have a lot of heart rate variability. Um, so that's what that's going to test out. You will use a heart rate monitor in order to take that test or to do that test. There is a leg, leg recovery test. So I have done this one a few times. Um, this one, uh, basically what you're going to do, it's going to, there's a how to here. Um, but it's going to give you basically a three second timer and then it's going to have you jump up in the air as hard as you can um, and it tests how high you can jump um, and that's going to give you an idea of how well recovered your legs are. So that's kind of cool. I've only done it a couple times so I haven't even been able to get a baseline for that one quite yet. We do also have a cycling test so this is going to um, test out your VO2 max uh, based on cycling. Again, I haven't done that one either. Um, this one is one I am looking forward to trying out. This is the running test. So this one's going to test out your VO2 max uh, based on running. And then of course, the same thing with fitness test uh, to test out your fitness. So those are the various tests you have available here. And then we can go down here into settings. So we have our general settings. Um, so this is where you can pair and sync it up with a heart rate monitor like the H9, the H10, the OH1 Plus. Um, you can uh, 
turn it, uh, the continuous heart rate tracking on or off. We also have recovery tracking. So that's where we can turn on our nightly recharge um, or recovery pro. Um, so you can do either one of these two. Um, obviously you can't do both. Um, and let's go ahead and go back. And then we also have flight mode. Do not disturb phone notifications. You can turn them on or off there. You can turn your, whoops, go back in there. You can turn music controls on or off. So that's going to just control the music functions on your phone. It doesn't actually store any music onto the watch, unfortunately. Um, so you don't have that available here. This is where you're gonna change it between Imperial and metric language your inactivity alert. So this is gonna give you alerts throughout the day if you're just sitting around too much. We have our vibrations, uh, where you wear the watch, position satellites. So if you wanna change the satellites, so you can see we have GPS plus GLONASS, Galileo, and QZSS. Um, you can see I've been using GPS plus GLONASS. I have found the GPS to be extremely accurate on this. Um, I have not had any situations where I didn't trust the GPS that was on here. I've uh, wore it next to my Apple Watch. I've done both of the watches at the same time and it's always pretty much spot on with my Apple Watch. I've tested out with my Garmin 400 245 Music. They're using essentially the same exact uh, GPS uh, sensors in the watches and uh, spot on for me uh, with this one. So I've not had any issues with that. We have some physical settings we can change change here. So this is your personal physical setting. So you can see I can uh, show you that, uh, but you don't need to see all that. And then we also have our watch settings as well. So we can do our uh, alarms. Here's where we can adjust the watch face to digital or analog. That's essentially all you have. Um, so there's not a bunch of watch faces out there that you can go get. Um, here's our time, our date, first day of the week, and you can adjust that as well. Go ahead and get out of that. And uh, when we get into our main watch face, essentially we're just gonna swipe back and forth or, so this is just gonna go into uh, the, those various screens I selected. So here is uh, our maintaining. So this is gonna be our cardio load status. So it tells you that I'm currently at maintaining kind of gives you an idea of where you're at. It says you're training less than usual. So I've only been using it for two weeks. So I'm not really sure that it's quite accurate. Um, so like I said, it's hard to really get, uh, you're, I almost have to wear this for like an entire month before I can really test all the features that this thing offers because there's so much to it. Um, this is of course current heart rate. Um, this one's going to show you your latest workout. So I can go in here, touch it, and or maybe I'll just hit the button so it goes to it. And uh, so this is our various workouts that I've tested out here. So I did a treadmill run last night. Today I did 11.24 miles or 11.43. That's what it was. Um, and then I can scroll down here. I can see a ton of different information. So our heart rate, max heart rate throughout that run. We have our cardio load. Whoops, I skipped over cardio load. So there it is, 159. Our heart rate zones throughout the run. We have our energy use. This is really cool. This is not a feature I've seen in other watches before. So it actually shows how much energy used based on carbs, protein, and fat. Um, we have our pace, so that was our average pace and max pace. Uh, running index, um, so that's, I, I'm not really certain how to analyze that one um, because it's not like your VO2 max, because my VO2 max is definitely not 70, it's a little different. If you wanna test your VO2 max, again, that's gonna be in that running test. Um, but then we have our speed zones, we have our power zones, very cool that you have power available here. So if you prefer to run based on power rather than heart rate, some people run in heart rate, some people run based on their power, um, that is available here. Power is not something I'm used to, so that's not really a feature I've paid attention to. I mostly train based on heart rate um, so and feel. I just kind of go off feel. Now, I will mention that the cadence is actually per foot, so really like my cadence is actually 180 to close to 200 today. Um, we have, of course, our altitude. We have hill splitters, so you can see not a whole lot of hills in my running today, uh, pretty much flat the whole time. We have our automatic laps. This is just going to show you the various laps. So like I said, I did 11 miles. I didn't do any um, laps, so these were just all automatic laps because I have it set to uh, go off every mile. So that's about it in terms of the uh, workout that I did today. Let's get out of that. And we'll go over here. So this is, what is this one? This is just, oh, nightly recharge. Okay, so this is gonna show me 
uh, whether I've uh, rested enough. So we have our ANS charge. Um, so the higher that is, the better. We have our sleep charge. You want that to be close to 100. Obviously, I didn't quite get there. I only got like seven hours of sleep and it was a little bit interrupted. Um, but you can see you can go in here and get your ANS details. That's your nightly recharge details and your sleep details. But those are also available on the app as well. So I'll show you that in just a little bit. Get out of that. We'll swipe over. And we have, now this is really cool. This is a feature that I really like. Um, so these are various activities you can do to help your, um, so if you need to improve your strength, your cardio, or just some supportive movements. Um, so like for me, mobility is definitely an issue. So it gives me some suggestions for improving my mobility. So I can go in here and there's a 23 minute workout and it'll actually walk you through some of those workouts. So really cool. Um, so I can go ahead and hit start, whoops. So here we go. And now it's going to actually walk me through them. So these are like different stretches and uh, things like that to improve my mobility. So I really like that. Um, I've only done a couple of them, um, but it's really nice because it just walks you right through them. And then we back to my main one, which is the weather that I have set up. So that is the watch. Um, I should mention here that uh, this is our light uh, up, down, and then this is our select button here. Uh, so lots to offer here now in terms of the accuracy i've already mentioned the gps is spot on for me um, i have found the heart rate to be a little bit less accurate than what i would like um, what i've found and i can see i can wear i've been wearing it on my right wrist i wear my apple watch on my left wrist um, but what i've found is that um, in comparison uh, to like an Apple Watch, for instance, the Apple Watch heart rate sensor I found to be very accurate. Garmin um, watches, the newer ones, I found the heart rate to be very accurate. This one, um, the only problem I've had is if I lift my wrist up like this in order to see the watch, I noticed that um, just me lifting my wrist up causes the heart rate sensor to kind of jump a little bit. So that would be the only thing, as long as I keep my wrist kind of flat and hold it there, uh, it's fine. And I have not had any issues and I'll look over and it's exactly the same as my um, Apple Watch. So like I said, I've been primarily using it with this OH1 Plus um, because then it automatically takes the heart rate from this and this has been super accurate i actually really really like this the only bad thing about it is that it only lasts for 12 hours so uh, the heart the battery on this so you have to charge it up you know every few days uh, in order to get it to work but it's phenomenal when you're using it i love it um, versus just wrist-based heart rate so huge props to the OH1 Plus. I really like that heart rate sensor. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual Polar Flow app. Um, this is not it. This is just Polar Flow orthostatic test. So I was looking at that earlier. So this is um, my day. Um, you can see we can go into our week and I can go back here and it can kind of show you my various workouts throughout the day. So this is our activity tracker. So, you know, obviously you want to be up to 100%. So most days I'm getting a little bit higher. I did take a day off back there. So only 48%. Yesterday I only ran six miles. So that was only at 78%. So I have it set so that my activity has to be pretty high in order to reach um, my goal. So we'll go back to day. So you can see today um, this hasn't updated. So in order to update it, I have to hold this down and now it's going to connect. So if you hold this button down, it's gonna connect up to the phone and you can see now that it's actually updating it. And so now it should update so that my daily goal status should be a lot higher because uh, I've gone for a run since because now it's, it's, it shouldn't be at 3.4 miles because earlier today I went for an 11.4 mile run. So this will update here in just a second. So there's our steps for the day. Again, this is not updated, so I probably shouldn't even show you this quite yet. Um, let's go ahead and go into some of the other stuff while we're waiting. So we'll go over here and uh, we'll take a look at our training. So it did already sync the workout. So I'm not really sure why it's not showing that for today. Um, but here is the same workout that I showed you um, on the watch. So all the exact same information is available here. So there's that running index. So this is kind of cool. It kind of tells you the training benefit of the workout that you just did. Got a little hair there on the phone, get rid of that. Um, so uh, this says great pace in a long session. So 11 miles, kind of did it in heart rate zone three most of the time. Um, so it considers, considers it a tempo training plus workout. Um, but for me, uh, it was kind of a, just a moderate workout. So medium cardio load, medium muscle load, low perceived load. Um, so that was just my perception of the actual workout. There's our training zones, same thing here. Uh, and 
Uh, again, same thing with those energy resources, and there's the map itself and all the different miles. Um, so all the same stuff, obviously here you can get the map as well, go out of that. And uh, there's our sleep and nightly recharge. So the same stuff you could see on the watch. Obviously there's a blog. Um, this is our feed. So if you have some friends, you can see their feed as well. Um, this is where I can get my notifications. No notifications at the time, at this time, back into Polar Flow. And we're gonna go over here to uh, shop. That's no, we don't wanna go into shop. That's just gonna take us to all the different things we can buy. Feature tutorials, so if you wanna know about some of the various features, but sport profiles, I did wanna show you. Because if you want to change what it shows you on the watch, this is where you're gonna go in. So let's say on running, I wanna change what it shows me while I'm running. Um, so we can have training sounds. So that's just gonna beep every mile uh, or whatever you have it set to. I have it set to a mile. Um, we have our heart rate zones, our uh, speed pace. So I have it set at minutes per mile, or you can set it to miles per hour, or watts, watts per kilogram, or percent of MAP. I'm not really sure what that one is. We can customize our zones. You can see I pretty much just let it go with what it um, established as my maximum heart rate. So I did a really hard workout the very first day uh, that I wore the watch and got my heart rate up to 190. And so that's been using that as my max heart rate sense, which pretty much was my max heart rate. Um, this is where you're going to adjust what it shows you on various screens. So you can see only four things per screen. So this is just what I have on my first screen, second screen, and then third screen, and you can adjust those. And then uh, you can also have it show other things on the other screens. So there's three screens, plus I have a four, five, six, seven, so seven screens total, uh, including one with Strava segments, so, and one with hill splitter. So if I'm doing a hill workout, I can go directly to the hill splitter screen. Uh, if I'm doing a Strava segment, I can go directly to that Strava segment screen as well. And then we have our GPS recording rate. So I have it set to one second, so we can adjust that there. So if you want the most accurate, obviously, you go there. Um, and then you can adjust that for all the different screens. So whatever workout you're doing, you can adjust those screens based on whatever workout you're doing. Um, if you are, uh, let's see here, going down to general settings. So if you want it to sync up to Strava, you're going to obviously have to do that here. But you can see so you can also use it, work, use it with My Fitness Pal, Training Peaks, Nike Plus Run Club, Komoot. Uh, so that's where you're going to get your maps. Google Fit, um, which I don't really use. Polar training results. Um, this is to add them to your Google uh, Calendar. So if you want to uh, push all this information to your Google Calendar, it can do that as well. So lots of things that you can do uh, in here. And like I said, there is so much to this watch uh, that it's really hard to even uh, go through everything. But if there's any features you specifically want me to go through, um, one that I would definitely like to make a video about is that running performance test or the running test, um, because I think that would be really interesting to test out, see what my VO2 max is with the watch. Um, so if there's anything you want me to test out, let me know. Thanks for watching. This video has been super long, but the Polar Vantage V2 has so many features that it has to offer. Um, let me know what you, questions you have about it, and uh, we'll see you all in the next video. Peace.